a little bit of a break from the usual of this channel, I've got myself here a new piece of wood. Wow. And not a cheap one either. So this is Douglas fir, planed with rounded edges. The good stuff. We've got these offcuts here. So this is um, not Douglas fir. This is another pine. I don't know the English name. It's called Lerche in German. I'll put it on the screen there what it is. Um, it's a really nice weather stable wood. So we're going to do four legs like this, the pieces, the offcuts here in the middle on four sides. And we need to do basically two operations. So on the legs, I want to take out some material like this. So we need to make uh, one, two, three, four cuts with a table saw, leaving just this. And that'll allow us to put our pieces of wood like this and like this. And then we can drive some screws in through the back here. First thing I do is cut the legs to length on the miter saw. Check out all of these not at all fake shots of measuring and cutting. After the legs are all cut to length, jump over to the table saw and set everything up. It's always been my dream to have a saw where I can adjust things with these big old hand wheels. Don't let dreams be dreams, kids. After everything is nicely set up, proceed to entirely fuck up the first important cut of this entire build. Now stare at it for a little while and think about what you've done. I'll give you a hint. You have to flip the board over long ways. Now that we got past that, go ahead and build this fine exemplar of safety to make the last cut. Yes, those are magnets holding the piece of wood from moving around as I make the cut. Now that the legs are done, jump back to the miter saw and cut one side of the side pieces square. I don't know if it's all of these linear bearing style miter saws that don't cut square, or if it's only this piece of shit. I've been fighting with it since I've gotten it, and I don't manage to get it to cut square. To expedite this process, I set up a stop block on the crosscut fixture of the table saw and cut all of the side pieces to length. Then some more turning of the cool old hand wheels, and we arrive at a setup which allows us to remove the convex faces of the boards so they sit flush with the legs. After that's all finished up, I cut the small plastic parts which go between the boards off camera. These boards are meant for building a watertight terrace, the plastic pieces collect the water and it runs off into a gutter. I then provisionally assemble everything with my nail gun. Now comes time to assemble the third side, and this is where things get a little bit too much for me to handle. After one side gets completely annihilated, edit out the choice words and hand waving and continue assembly. Go ahead and dig through your random screw box, finding just enough screws with 15 different heads to put everything together. When you can't cut it straight, force it straight. Now we move on to cutting and mounting the top finishing piece of the planter. 
I know how cool it is, but I decided to skip the shots of the hand wheel turning this time. I really need to build a brake for this saw. It takes 5 minutes to spin down if you just let it go. It's a direct drive from a 4 horsepower motor. Very carefully cut the miters onto the ends of the boards. Line them up and then pre-drill, countersink and screw it all together. Finally, sand everything flush. Make sure you only highlight the nicest of the four miters on the YouTube video. Use the rest of the pieces to make some slats for the bottom, leaving a pretty big gap between them so water can escape. Nail them all in. Also, check out my hat. Take your oily, weatherproof schmoo of choice and apply everywhere, including the floor, your hands, your clothes, and your pride. This is supposed to be mahogany color. Maybe I did something wrong. All right, tomorrow is now today. Everything is dried. Now it's time to staple some plastic in to protect the wood from the inside. At this step, you're basically done. Fill it with rocks and dirt and stick your plants inside. I removed the small plastic pieces between the boards for painting and don't forget to stick them back on. Well, there you go. Apparently I lack even the basic capacity to listen to which plant needed a planter. It wasn't the gimpy one on the right. That one is a-okay. It was the one next to it. See you in the next one. Ciao.